Hi everyone, welcome. Welcome to Master Maker. I am your host, Sarah Lovecraft. And here at Master Maker, we focus on specialty findings, components, and of course beads, and all of the other cool things that you can use in your jewelry. And I show you how you can incorporate those, sometimes in out of the box kinds of ways, into your own jewelry making, and uh, help you become a Master Maker yourself. Thank you so much for joining me every Friday afternoon. I am really excited about today's show. I do have an announcement for everybody here in just a few minutes. However, I do want to go through the housekeeping part of our show before we get into all of that. So first and foremost, welcome all of our new people. We're really happy to see you and we're really happy to have you become part of our community. And speaking of our community and finding new people, guys, if you do not mind to share this anywhere you are allowed to do so in your own social media or in groups that you may be a part of, say on Facebook, uh, if you can post this and share it, that is a wonderful way. It's sort of like virtual word of mouth to get people who maybe don't know about Master Maker, maybe don't know about Jewel School or JTV. It's a great way to reach them and bring them in to our amazing community. So if you don't mind, give this a share. We would really, really appreciate it. Speaking of sharing the love, if you do not mind to hit the heart buttons anytime you see something in today's show that you love, whether it is a technique or a bead or a finding or you are just feeling particularly loving, uh, hit those heart buttons. It's a great way to let us know that you're watching and that you are continuing to enjoy what we are doing here. Right. All right, guys, at any point during the day, during today's show, you can hit that shop button that is at the bottom of your screen. You can hit that shop button and it's going to pull up all of the information about all of the items that I have in the show. And while you do that, you can also add those to your cart and check out. And you know, the cool part is that you're not going to miss anything that happens here on the show. It just makes me a little bit smaller, but you can still watch the show as you're doing all of that, which is fantastic because sometimes when we navigate away, you know, and we lose our place and we have a really hard time finding our way back, we don't have to worry about that here. You can take care of all of your shopping business um, and get all of the specs on all of the items that I have in the show while not missing a beat. However, should you have to miss, should you need to go away, or perhaps after you have ordered your items and they come in and you've forgotten what you were going to do with them, you can always come back and watch this as a video on demand, which is great because you can be inspired twice, right? You can also go ahead and share that again too if you want to right? Let it live on as long as it can. All right. So hello to everybody. Hi, Gina. Hi, Janelda. Hi, Peggy. It's so good to see you guys. I love it when there are familiar faces in the house, but it is extra special when there are new faces as well. So welcome to all of you who are just now learning about Master Maker and just now learning about all of the other amazing creators that we have here on JTV Extra, because I'm not the only one. I'm not. There are some other really amazing and talented designers who have shows here as well, and you definitely want to check them out. Now, if you've not gotten enough of me, <laughs> I do several lives a week. This is the only Master Maker that happens here on JTV Extra, though. That's on Fridays. <laughs> However, I, I am other places throughout the rest of the week. If you're not getting enough of me, which I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> why you wouldn't be, but if you are not getting enough of me and you want to see more Master Maker, I have a very exciting announcement. So Master Maker 2 is going to be happening starting Monday, Monday afternoon at 4.30 p.m. Set your reminders, 4.30 30. That's on the 30, right? So it's not at our regular four o'clock time slot. So make sure you make that, that difference between your reminders for yourself. But on at 4.30 p.m. Eastern time on Mondays, Master Maker 2 is going to be happening. So I'm really excited to get that started. I do want to give you a quick little uh, little bit of information about Master Maker 2, and then we're going to get right into our show. So Master Maker 2 is going to be just a little bit different than what we do here on Master Maker for our Friday shows. Here on Fridays, we like to uh, talk about really cool findings and focals and things like that, and we create usually a, a statement piece of some variety. We're going to be doing the same things on Master Maker 2 on Mondays. However, we are going to be very technique focused. So 
For instance, on Monday, we're going to be starting out with Wire 101. We're going to be starting out with all of the basic wire tips that you're going to need to know. And throughout the month, we're going to build on those skills. So we're going to start out on Monday, start kind of easy. We're going to talk about the basics. And then the next time you see me, we're going to build even further onto that. And by the end of the month, we're going to have learned several things about Wire, which is really awesome. And it also means that the following month, it's going to be something different, right? We may do macrame. We may do pearl knotting. We may do, um, I don't know, any number of things. I also take requests, so please let me know if there's anything you want to see. Uh, but that's the way that uh, Master Maker 2 is going to be just a little bit different. You're still going to get me. You're still going to get all of my ramblings and my little nuggets of wisdom, but we are going to be very technique-based when it comes to our Monday shows. So uh, definitely going to be a little bit different, but uh, still very much the same. <laughs> Take that however you, <laughs> what? All right, so let's get started with today's show because today's show is a fun one as always. I love our Friday afternoons. This is my favorite way to finish out my week. I don't know how you feel about it, but this is the last thing I do in my studio uh, at the end of the work week and I love it. So it's always exciting to me to get to show you some amazing things. I've got some gorgeous beads for you guys and I have a really cool finding set that I don't want want you to miss out on. You definitely want to stick around for that. So we're going to start out with the beads and then we're going to take a look at the findings and then we're going to do a little project using some of the beads, using some of the findings as and it's also going to kind of double as a teaser to what you can expect on Monday show. So I kind of, you know, wrapped everything up and we're going to put a nice little bow on it and call it a day. So let's get turned around and get started with all of it, shall we? All right, guys. So, as usual, here on our Friday afternoons, I've got beads, 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 and more beads. I have two sets of amethyst today. I want to show them to you each individually. So, I have an amethyst strand of 10 millimeter round beads that is about 14 and a half inches long. Absolutely beautiful. Amethyst is quickly becoming one of my favorites to work with. I used to not really be much of a pink person or a purple person. However, amethyst has really kind of changed my views on purple. Uh, it's much easier now for me that I'm kind of used to it to incorporating purple into my designs. I know that there are a lot of people who love purple. Like I can, I could name probably five people right, right off the top of my head that say purple is their favorite color. But when it comes to jewelry design, that might be your favorite color, but sometimes it's a little bit harder to work with. It can be a little bit of a challenge if you don't know what to mix it with. And I have just found that the more that I work with it, the easier it is to design with. And amethyst, like I mentioned before, is very quickly becoming one of my favorites because it has so much personality. It's not just one solid purple. This has so many different variations of purple in it. Uh, and that makes it truly beautiful. It gives it its own personality, particularly when we're talking about beads. Each one of them has their own little personality. It's like a little planet all in itself, uh, but it works beautifully with so many other colors. And it took me a while to kind of realize that you can mix this, of course, with blacks, with whites. It looks amazing with different shades of gray. It always works really well with blues and uh, other shades of purple because there are so many different purple tones that are in here. You can really mix this with all kinds of other things to create some really beautiful things. It's nice and luxurious feeling. When I think of purple, I really kind of think of royalty and that is no exception when it comes to amethyst. So I've got this amethyst strand. This is a 10 millimeter round bead. So this is definitely a large bead that is going to look amazing with some of your other things. I definitely would mix in like some spacers or maybe some crystals or something with this so that I could really kind of get all of the, um, all of the benefits of this bead strand in a lot of different ways, right? All right, so if that's not enough amethyst for you, I have some cape amethyst that is just as beautiful. Let me set this to the side here. I've got cape amethyst. It's just a slightly different color, purple, not by much, but just a little bit. I've got two strands here. I've got a 10 millimeter strand and a 12 millimeter strand, and these are 15 inch strands as well. So you can see this one just has kind of a, just a little bit different tone to it. It's not a whole lot different, but one of them is a little bit lighter. So the Cape Amethyst, I'm gonna bring them, the other one out here so you can kind of see the difference. 
this amethyst is just a little bit lighter where the cape amethyst has a little bit more richness to it is a little has a little bit more depth and darkness to it this is definitely the more moody of the two um, but they're both absolutely beautiful and again are going to work really well with a lot of different colors because of all of the different shades of the purple that's in there peggy says she really likes purple and teal together i do too love to mix this with teal it's absolutely beautiful and the cool thing about that is is that it can be any kind of teal it can be the teal that's on the blue side or the teal that's on the green side and the purple always looks amazing with it so really awesome all right i'm going to sit these to the side this is not the last time you're going to see these because we're going to use those in today's project but i also have some hematite chevron beads for you these are so cool i i'm really really in love with this strand right here uh, it's it is all three strands so you're getting all three colors here so you got three tones of the hematine chevron uh, these are six by one millimeter beads you can see they so they are kind of a small bead but they pack a punch it's a set of three in three different tones. The strands are 15 to 16 inch strands, so they're nice and long. And with it being a small bead, that's a ton of beads to work with. This is a beautiful one that can either be copper, depending on how you mix this, you know, what you mix it with, it's going to go to the copper side. I kind of see this more as like a rose gold though. And when I've shown this one to other people, they immediately call this one rose gold. Uh, there's kind of a fine line between super, super shiny copper and rose gold, but I definitely think this is more on the pink side it is absolutely beautiful this is going to look amazing mixed with other things but I do have to say I love the way it looks all by itself like just to make a chevron bracelet with nothing else but just those bees is absolutely stunning love them love them so there is the uh, rose gold colored and then we have a this is sort of a gold bronze kind of this, I guess it's a bronzy, it's kind of a bronzy, um, gosh, what is the word I'm looking for? Brass, a bronzy brass. There it is. I knew it was coming. Absolutely beautiful. It looks like liquid, doesn't it? It's just, they're just so beautiful. They're so beautiful. You're going to be able to use these as spacers. If you just use one or two of these in your designs, like a couple of these between your favorite beads, you're going to have a ton of these left over. They're so pretty and they feel so nice. And then we have the silver color as well. So you're getting all three of the colors. So you can mix these with all of your other beads. There's definitely one in a tone that you are going to love, but I do love that you can get all three so you can play with them. I know for me personally, I always tend to work with silver colored things, but when I get a set of something that has more than one metal tone in it, it really helps to expand my creativity as a designer, right? Because maybe I'm not used to using rose gold colored things, right? And if I have them, then I'm more inclined to use them and kind of think outside the box and stretch my creativity. So uh, even if one of these colors is not your favorite, just look at it as a challenge to uh, just grow as a designer. Really, really beautiful. I love these. All right, I'm gonna sit these to the side because we are not stopping. We've got more things. Now, I have Mother of Pearl multi-shaped strands in a set of 10. Guys, there's a ton of these, and I think you're really going to like them because they are super cool. So I'm going to bring out the bundle, and then we're going to talk about the individual shape. Like, this is a lot. <laughs> individual shapes here, but just all together in general. Oh, my gosh. And I love the way that these are drilled. So this is a set of 10, so you're getting all of these. It's not just one strand where you pick one. You're getting all of these, and these are nice, really long strands that come in a lot of different shapes. So right here in my hand, I have the hearts, and you can see that they're drilled straight down the middle so that you have the opportunity to add a bead inside there if you wanted to, right? Which I think is super cool. Let's take one of these little amethysts. You could pop an amethyst. Oh, that would be... a like that's going to create a whole new bead all in itself, right? You're going to mix that amethyst in there. It's going to fit perfectly in that space. And you've just created an amethyst mother of pearl bead. That's so cool. I love that. So you can put other beads inside if you want to, or you can just leave them as is. They're lightweight. They're beautiful. A lot of them have a real kind of luster and shine to them. So there's the hearts, we have some squares here. This is probably the largest out of all of them. 
These are going to be really cool. The the squares in particular, not that you can't use the other ones this way as well, but the, the square ones, because they're nice and large, you're going to be able to not only use the hole where they're drilled, but you're also going to be able to use the sides of these as well. So if you wanted to do multi-strand designs, you could probably fit several jump rings right here on this side and right on the other side to really create some cool uh, like connection points from multi-strand designs. Really, really lovely. So there are the larger squares. I have another strand of the hearts. These are the same size as those. So you're getting two strands of the beautiful hearts. They're really pretty. This shape here that I absolutely love. You're getting so many of these. If you just made earrings alone, <laughs> you could you could make a ton of earrings. Here are some circles. They're starting to get wrapped up in my tools here. There's so many of them. There are the circles, which is always a favorite. Look at the color in that one. That's so beautiful. These, because they're that beautiful cream color, are going to mix with all kinds of other things. There's a little bit smaller of a circle. There is... A rectangle shape that is really cool you don't see a lot of this shape in beads so I really was intrigued by this I think that's got a lot of potential here's another strand of the hearts can never have too many of the hearts you've got another strand of the circles and then this one as well that is again 10 strands so you're getting the multi shape strands set of 10 that's all of them that's a whole lot of beads so you don't have to pick just one strand from this mix. You're going to get all of those, and you're going to have a ton of these to create with. Sandy says they're fun to brick stitch around. I think that's an awesome idea. I love that. You definitely could do some really amazing seed beading techniques around these, uh, as well as wire wrapping if you wanted to. So you've got a lot to work with. All right, now, if quantity is the name of the game for you, like the, the strands I just showed you, I've got a findings kit that is findings for days, okay? Findings <laughs> for days. I'm going to bring my little tray out here, and then we're going to talk about all of these. This is 708 pieces of findings. There's so many on my tray, I can't even show them all. These are from John Bede. They're absolutely beautiful. I mean, can findings be beautiful? I think they can. I think they can. And this is such a cool assortment. And the stainless steel color is going to work with so many other metals. And it's also going to look really amazing with tons of different bead colors. So if you need to stock up on findings, this is definitely going to be one you don't want to miss out on. 708 pieces. Let's talk about all of the pieces that are here. But I do want to mention that this also comes with a storage container. I have a ton of these on my desk and they are all full. I have them stacked up. I probably have, I don't know, I would even say maybe 20 to 25 of these on my desk. That's how much I love these containers and they are full. I will fill them all up with one color. So I have one that's all copper. I have one that's all gold colored things. One that's all silver. One that's all stainless steel. One that's all rose gold. It's a really great way to store your findings in a way that you can see them and then you can stack them up and just reach for the ones that you want they're nice they've got a really nice little snap closure on them so they're they stay closed but they're not hard to open and close because some of them that you find out there in the world can be kind of hard difficult to open and close these are not like that love these so this little container comes with all of these so let's talk about what all of these kind of means so just to get us started here, there are two different sizes of jump rings. There are some six millimeter jump rings and some eight millimeter jump rings. When I talk about a bead size being kind of the sweet spot and I talk about six millimeter beads that way a lot, that's really the same way that I feel about jump rings as well. The six millimeter bead is that sweet spot. I'm sorry, six millimeter jump ring is a sweet spot in findings. It's the one that I really kind of grab and go to the most. So anytime I can stock up on those I am excited to do that. So you've got them in the six millimeter and you've got them in the eight millimeter. There are a ton of them. There are also some lobster clasps, which is one of my favorite clasps. I like it the most out of all of the, the small uh, kind of standard findings clasps. These are always kind of my go-to if I don't pick something that's more decorative. I love a lobster clasp. You're also getting some head pins and some eye pins. And these are not the only ones. Hold on. 
So there are some really small ball head pins as well, which I love. I love these because if you're going to do just an individual bead and you're just going to do a simple loop, this is all you need. That way you don't have a ton of waste, right? Whereas these are a little bit longer. You're going to be able to put tons of beads on these and use up the entire length. So I think it's cool that you get a, a bit of a variation here. So there are head pins. There are eye pins. There are some of the small ball head pins, which I really, really love. There are some beautiful decorative bead caps which are really nice. And might I add that this all stainless steel, it all goes together, which I also love because it just means that I can take my little, my little container, fill it up, and then I can use all of these together in one design, which is awesome. There are two different kinds of ear wires. So you've got the, um, the fish hooks as well as the lever backs or lever backs, depending on how you say it. So you've got a good little assortment of ear wires. You can never have too many ear wires. There are some pinch bells, which is always nice to have. I always need a pinch bell when I don't have one. So <laughs> I kind of love that this comes with pinch bells because this is one of those findings that unless you use them a whole lot, you might not necessarily just go out and buy them when you're buying findings. So the fact that these come with it is really cool because then I don't have to... I don't have to hunt for them. I can put them in my little storage container and when I need one, I have them. Love that. There are some folding end crimps. So these are cord ends. I love to use these with my leather designs and other kinds of um, stringing material that I don't need to do like a regular standard crimp on. They work really, really well with uh, your cords all kinds of cords. It doesn't just have to be leather, right? There are some earring clutches. These are always handy to have. Uh, and again, this is another one of those findings where it, it never fails that I need them, but I don't have them. So this is really nice to get a, an assortment of those. There are some crimps as well, which everybody needs a good set of crimps, right? And these are in that stainless steel. So they're going to match all of the other findings that you've got. And then last but not least, we have four sets here of spacer beads. So there are some donut spacer beads in a couple of different sizes and then a round spacer bead. I can never have enough spacer beads. I go through spacer beads like crazy. I go through them just about as fast as I go through bead caps. So the fact that there are four uh, little containers of these is really nice. They come in a couple of different sizes. So you've got the eight by five, the eight by four, the six by three, and then you've got a five millimeter round. So that's a ton. I Did I mention that was 708 pieces total? That's a lot of findings. A lot of findings plus the little container to put them in. Like you can't beat that. So if you are looking to stock up, I've got you covered when it comes to amethyst, when it comes to mother of pearl, and when it comes to findings. This is definitely the show for stocking up, right? You're getting ready for those holiday shows. If you've got, you know, if you've got a, a craft fair that you're going to be taking part in, you might want to take a little thing of findings with you. It never hurts to have your findings and your tools on hand, right? Or just use all of those amazing findings to create the pieces that you're going to put in your craft booth or on your website. All right, so let's talk about what is possible. Not that, you know, you guys need any help with that because you are amazingly creative, but just wanted to kind of show you <laughs> if you wanted to mix things together. This was just a, I was just kind of playing around last night before I put together our design for today, the project that we're going to do. And I was just kind of mixing things together and really kind of playing around with not only the findings, but with the beads that are in the show. So I used one of those beautiful square beads for the top here. This could be a really cool focal for a necklace. I would also make a pretty cool purse charm, uh, but I used one of the large amethyst beads. This was one of the cape amethyst beads because you can you can see it's a little bit darker than the one that's kind of peeking out over here. I used one of the heart beads and you'll notice that I didn't I didn't use these by going straight through them, which you can, of course, because like I mentioned, you can put beads in the, those spaces there. If you wanted to string a bead in between there, you could. But I actually use these by taking a head pin, or I'm sorry, yeah, a head pin, and I thread the head pin through and just made a simple loop at the top. That's going to give me a connection point. It's also doable on the other side as well. So I just thread a head pin through and then added a bead to it and made a simple loop. So you don't have to string straight through them. If you want to use that open spacing as part of your design, you can, or you can thread straight through there and add some beads. 
And then I made, you guys know I love clusters and dangles. It's one of my favorite things. And I was like, what can I make a cluster out of? I used some of those donut beads in the findings and some of the jump rings to make this really interesting metal cluster. Now, I think it would probably be prettier if it were a bead, but I was just playing around to see what's possible. And sometimes that's where some of your greatest designs come from, right? We call those happy mistakes, happy accidents. You never know. So um, if you've ever got time to just kind of sit and play around, this is pretty cool. I just used, again, some of those donut beads. I took an eight millimeter jump ring to uh, go through and treated it just like it were a bead. And then I just used the six millimeter beads to create the little cluster. So it's definitely interesting, right? Uh, but a cool way to kind of mix all of the things that are in the show together right? Minus the chevrons. I just didn't go far enough. I could have added some really cool chevrons to this as well. So just a little, just a little bit uh, inspiration as to the different ways that you can use these uh, mother of pearl beads and use the, the drill holes in them. All right, so I promised a project and we are going to put together a project. I'm going to use one of the strands of amethyst. So I'm using the, the uh, 10 millimeter amethyst beads. Debbie says how many are each are in each container and Susie says if you will click on the item it gives the specific amount for each. That's right at any point during the show you absolutely can hit that shop button and you're going to be able to pull up and it's going to give you all of the information. I do have all of the exact numbers for those but because there are 700 and what eight pieces <laughs> It might be faster for you instead of listening to me list them all off to to click that shop button. But um, if you if you need to know, I definitely can tell you. But that information is available for you if you will click on that shop button for sure. Not that I mind to give it to you. All right, <coughs> so. I'm going to use some of these beautiful amethyst beads and I kind of mentioned that uh, we might kind of do maybe a wire project that might be a little teaser for Master Maker 2. That's kind of what I was thinking today. I'm going to use these beautiful amethyst beads and we're going to use some of the amazing findings. Look, I even put some of them into the container so you can see how they look mixed into the little container, which I think is a lot of fun. So I've got this, got my findings ready. I also have some of the eye pins. We're gonna use some of the eye pins and <clears throat> we're gonna create an infinity bracelet with some wire and with some of these findings. So let me show you what I was thinking. All right, I'm gonna open up the eye pins here. And if you'll notice, I already have several of these are ready to go. But we're going to do a couple of these together because it never hurts uh, to practice your simple loops. So we are going to do that. We're going to do a couple together. And then we're going to make some really simple wire components. <clears throat> and again, this is kind of a teaser for Master Maker coming up at 430 P 4 30 Eastern time on Monday, where we're going to be focusing on wire. We're going to make some simple components today. And if you like what we do here today, then hopefully you'll set your reminder and join me on Monday, right? But we're going to create some infinity links here with some wire, and we're going to put them together with our amethyst beads to make a really cool design. I'm going to show you how to do that step by step. But first things first, we're going to start with using some of the eye pins from our findings kit today and create some simple loops. So for each one of our amethyst beads, we're going to take those and we're going to thread those onto an eye pin, just like so. And then we're going to create a simple loop. <clears throat> and earlier today, this is such a, this is a great, great time to have this conversation because earlier today I was actually asked about simple loops. Uh, in a live that I did earlier, somebody asked me how it is that I get those loops round every single time. Well, first of all, I want you to know that I don't always get my simple loops perfectly round. I don't think that anybody gets them round 100% of the time. That's just kind of the way that simple loops are. It's tricky. Whoever decided to call them simple was crazy. <laughs> And whoever you are, I'm sorry for saying that, but it's true because simple loops can be kind of a challenge. So let me walk you through this nice and slow. We're going to grab the wire where it is exiting that bead, right? And we're going to bend that over the top of where the, it's exiting the bead. Sometimes I'm able to make that bend with just my fingers, but sometimes I need the help of a tool to do that, like my pliers here. 
So let me show you that one more time. I know that seems pretty simple, but sometimes we take those little simple things for granted. So again, thread your bead onto an eye pin or a head pin, depending on what you're gonna do with it. And then you're gonna bend the wire. I like to, particularly when I'm using a stiff finding, I like to do it in little bites, right? So watch, I kind of chomp down Notice the movement, it's just slight, and sometimes when I'm doing it fast, you don't even notice that I'm doing it. But I'm kind of chomping down like an alligator, like biting down on that wire to give it that bend. So if you can't do it with your finger, and sometimes you can, sometimes you can't, just kind of depends on the circumstances, doing that little chomping motion is really gonna help you. All right, so now the next step of this is you're gonna trim off the wire. You wanna leave yourself about four, I'm sorry, a fourth of an inch of wire. Now, a good rule of thumb, at least for me, is to measure with my finger. I will rest the bead up against my index finger and then I kinda use the width of my finger if I'm pinching as my measurement. That doesn't work for everybody because obviously everybody's fingers are a little bit, you know, wider or skinnier than others, uh, but it's a good measure for me. So my advice to you is to find something else that you can measure. You know, if, if you know that halfway across your finger is about a fourth of an inch, then that's what you're gonna go for every single time. But if you can find something like that, that you can measure against every single time without having to pick up a ruler, that's really gonna help you save some time. You're gonna come in with your cutter tool and you're gonna trim off, you're gonna leave yourself about, like I said, a fourth of an inch of wire. The goal is to try to get your loop the same size or as close to the same size as the loop that is already on your eye pin as possible. A fourth of an inch of wire is gonna give you that just about every time or at least get you in the ballpark right all right then I'm going to use my round nose pliers this is the part that people have the hardest time with I'm going to use my round nose pliers I'm going to grab that wire and I'm going to roll back but notice how I'm rolling back I'm not doing it in one and this one didn't even turn into a loop so it's a good uh, this is a good example I'm not doing it in one smooth motion Right? And we talked about this earlier, if you were with me earlier today in a, in, a, in a previous live. Some people can do it that way. Some people can do it in just one smooth motion. And those people are my hero. However, I am not one of those people. I have to do it in little rocking motions. I have to gently rock, gently roll that wire back towards the bead and back towards my hand to create that loop. So if that's the way you do it, you're not doing it wrong. Do what works for you. If you can do it in one smooth mo movement, great. If you have to do little rocking motion, that's great too. And you can see here, mine's not a perfect circle. This is more of like a teardrop shape. And I'm okay with that because in the grand scheme of things, once I put this into my actual design, nobody is gonna notice whether or not my loops are simply simply perfectly round, <laughs> or if they're just simply teardrops or egg shapes or anything in between there, okay? You can, you can let yourself off the hook. Let's do it again. All right, so we're gonna come in with our cutter tool and we're gonna trim off, leave ourselves about a fourth of an inch of wire. Again, we're gonna use our round nose pliers grab that wire, and then we're gonna roll back. Whoops, <laughs> if I can hold on. And again, I'm using kind of a rocking motion to roll back to create that loop. I'm not doing it in just one movement because I can't. Some of us can, some of us can't. There's no wrong, there's no right. But at the end of the day, as long as you've got a good closure on whatever that shape is, you are winning. <laughs> Trust me. Let's do two more and then we're gonna we're gonna create our wire components. All right, so I'm gonna take another bead, I'm gonna thread that onto an eye pin. These handy eye pins that came in our findings kit for the day. <laughs> if you need a reminder, hit that shop button to see what else is in that findings kit. We're gonna bend that wire where it exits the bead, coming in with our cutter tool trimming off, leave yourself a fourth of an inch of wire or somewhere in that, that general area, and then you're gonna roll back to create your loop, okay? Make sure your loop is closed, that's super important. All right, one more, and then we are going to move on. All right. So again, chomp, 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 chomp to bend that wire, right? 
You don't have to do it that way, but if you struggle with it, you certainly can. Trim off, use your round nose pliers, grab that wire, and then I'm gonna rock and roll with my round nose pliers to get myself a closed loop, okay? All right, so you're gonna do that with several of your beads. It's really gonna kind of just depend on how long you need your bracelet to be, but I'm gonna do several. I've got these ready to go. I'm gonna sit them over here to the side. And now I'm gonna bring in some wire. <clears throat> We're gonna do a quick little wire uh, component. It's really easy to do. It's just a little figure eight. And I'm gonna need about 10 of these for my bracelet. Uh, but again, depending on what size bracelet you need, you might need more, you might need less. As far as the gauge of wire, I'm using some 16 gauge wire for this. However, as long as your wire is 18 gauge or thicker, you're good to go. Okay, so don't feel like you gotta, you know, you gotta struggle. If, if you don't have 16 gauge wire, grab that 18 gauge wire. We're gonna work hard in it either way, so it's gonna work out just fine. I don't take a measurement. I like to work straight off of the spool when I create these. So first things first, I wanna trim the very tip of this wire with my cutter tool. I'm using a flush cutter so that the tip of that you can see is flush. That's really important. You want that to be a flush cut at the end. Uh, in case you're curious, JTV has these flush cutters. So you might wanna, might wanna grab those if you need them. And I'm gonna straighten out a short section. Again, I haven't cut it. I'm using it directly off of the spool. And I'm gonna use some bail making pliers here. I am using a combination of my large bell making pliers and my small bell making pliers for today's project. Let me grab the small ones to show you. So these are not exactly in the show plan, but I do wanna mention these because you can buy this set from JTV. Um, I believe that is item number, uh, let's see here, JSKIT0150. Again, this is not under that shop button, and I've got I've got a few friends here who are going to drop that item number in case you missed it into the chat if you're interested. But you can buy both of these from JTV um, as a set. I love them. I am going to use both of them, but we're going to use the large bell making pliers to create our uh, our little infinity loops. All right, so I'm going to use the large the larger bell of the two from the large bell making pliers. I'm going to grab the wire just like so, and I'm just going to roll the wire with the tool to create a loop, okay? That's all I did, just created a loop with the larger bell. I'm gonna kind of flip that over in my hands and I'm gonna grab the wire right up against the loop I just made and we're gonna go in the opposite direction You might have to readjust the tool in your hand to create another loop. So we've just created a, basically a, a figure eight with our pliers, okay? And I'm going to use my cutter tool and I'm gonna snip that off of the spool right at where those wires are gonna crisscross. Whoops, I didn't get a good cut there, hold on. All right, that's going to break it free from the wire because I didn't do a measurement, right? And now I have my eight. <coughs> Excuse me. Now you're going to notice that mine's a little bit open. I didn't cut nearly close enough. You do want to try to get a little bit closer, but it's okay if it's not completely closed because you can always come in with your pliers and kind of wiggle it to close it up. You definitely wanna get it as close to closed as possible because when we start adding these beads to this to create our bracelet, we don't want them to slide out, right? Once we do that, if you have the ability to work harden, which I hope you do, um, we're gonna put these on the block and I'm gonna work harden with nylon hammer. You can do with nylon, rubber, uh, whatever, rawhide mallet, whatever you want to work harden with. This is just gonna help to make sure that we keep that nice shape. Even though we're using a thicker gauge wire, it is helpful to use something like this to work hard in it just a little bit. All 
All right, so we're gonna do another one. Again, it's just a simple little eight. We're creating that with the bell making pliers. You're gonna need about 10 of those. We'll do one more. So again, when I come back to my wire that's still on the spool here, I'm gonna come in with my cutter, and again, I'm gonna trim that little tiny, because you see where I cut it before, it's kind of a jagged little tip. I wanna cut that off to make sure I've got a nice flush cut on that wire, okay? Super important, because when those wires come together, you, you want those to be as close to flat as possible. Now, it's, it's, not, it's not possible, I mean it is, <laughs> but I, if you're going as fast as I am, it's not possible to get them set right up against each other, but they will. That's why I'm saying if it's flush, it will sit up against the surface of the other wire here. So uh, if, you, if you have got the time to take to make that happen, you can. All right, so again, I'm using the largest barrel of the large bell making pliers, and all I'm doing is just creating a loop on the wire, just like so. And then I'm just gonna flip that over in my hand and I'm gonna grab it again with the bell making pliers where that loop, you can see there's no daylight there. That loop is sitting up against the edge of the tool. And then I'm gonna go in the opposite direction. You can either turn the tool or you can help turn your wire or a little bit of both, which is usually kind of what I do to bring that wire around until it crosses and I have that full eight. And then I'm gonna come in with my cutter tool. And again, I'm trying to cut close to where those two wires cross over each other so that when I cut it free from the spool of wire, this is what I've got, right? And again, I can come in with my pliers and kind of wiggle it to get it as close to closed as possible. Right, just a little bit of a wiggle. It's pretty darn close right there. Let's flip this one over so we can do the same thing. And just kind of wiggle to get it as close to closed as possible. And then again, you want to put it on your block and work harden it a little bit. Particularly if you're using 18 gauge wire, it definitely needs a little extra work hardening. Okay, now I made large infinity links here. And part of the reason that I made such large infinity links is because I'm using a 10 millimeter bead, right? I want the links, <laughs> that fits perfectly in there. I want the, the, the infinity links to be about the same size as the beads because once this all goes together, I want the piece to be balanced, right? However, if you're gonna use a bead smaller than uh, this 10 millimeter bead, you might wanna make your loops a little bit smaller. So that's why having both sets of the bell making pliers is definitely gonna come in handy because that's gonna give you four different size options as far as your loops are concerned. Plus it's just really kind of a handy set of tools to have. All right, so <coughs> now I'm gonna lay this out for you for how this is all gonna come together. You can do this any number of ways, but I want to lay mine out so that I have infinity links with an amethyst bead going between them, and not just one, but two. So I'm gonna take two amethyst beads between links. And we are gonna connect all of this together. Okay, I'm not gonna do the whole bracelet this way, but I am gonna do at least here in the middle of my bracelet. just like so, okay? And then I'm gonna do another, another amethyst on either end. And then I'm gonna just do a set of three of the infinity links. We're gonna use some of those findings from the findings kit. So we're gonna use some of those jump rings I'm gonna finish it off with three on that side and I'm gonna finish it off with three on this side. And we're gonna link all of this together with some jump rings as well as the simple loops that we have created. And then we're gonna create a cute little clasp for this, just something easy. 
um, that we can do together, but you could use any number of ways to finish this off, okay? So I've just laid it all out for you. Now we're actually going to start putting this together. <clears throat> I'm actually gonna start in the middle. So I'm gonna take the six infinity links that I have on the ends, and I'm just gonna set those to the side, and we're gonna focus on this area here, because this area is all about opening and closing those, those simple loops. All right, so that's what we're gonna do, and we're gonna do each one. I didn't do any of this in advance. We're doing it all together. So once you've created those simple loops, <clears throat> when it's time to open those loops to secure them to something else, unless you're using a jump ring as your go-between, you wanna treat these loops just like you would if they were a jump ring, meaning you don't ever wanna pull these apart, right? You wanna twist to open these just like you would twist a jump ring because otherwise you'll never get that shape back again. So you're gonna twist to open and then we're gonna thread that on to one of our infinity links. And then just like we opened it, we're gonna to twist to close it, okay? We're gonna attach another one. So we're gonna open and attach to our infinity link and twist to close. Now we're gonna come over here to the other side and we're gonna open the other loop. So again, twist to open, thread that on, and then you're gonna to twist to close. And then I find that sometimes with this one, it's a little bit more challenging just because you wanna be sure that you're wire and your loop are going in the right direction. So sometimes it might take a little bit of trial and error when attaching this one, because sometimes you get that, you get your bead turned around. Okay, just like so. Now you can see why it's really important that we have a good closure on our infinity links. You can see this one's open. So technically, see how that, that loop could, could, could slide through there? You wanna be sure that you're not allowing any space in there because you don't wanna lose any of your beads. So if you need to come back in and kind of wiggle your infinity links a little bit to ensure that that doesn't happen, you wanna be sure that you don't have big, big gaps because you don't wanna lose any of your beads. All right, so again, we're gonna attach a bead. So we're just working our way down, attaching a bead two beads per infinity loop. Sometimes I have to wiggle them a little bit. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna link this one on. Now, I do wanna mention again, shameless plug here. <laughs> if you love today's project, this is more of what you can expect coming up for Master Maker 2. Uh, we're, we're still gonna be creating designs, but we really are gonna kinda go more in depth and in detail of techniques. So where we have broken down the simple loop, you can expect more of the same um, on Monday at 4.30 Eastern Time for Master Maker 2. We're gonna kinda get down and dirty when it comes to techniques. We're gonna deep dive on a lot of things that sometimes get overlooked here on our Friday shows where we're just putting together amazing pieces of jewelry. All right, so I'm gonna open. And then again, kind of be mindful of the direction of your loop on this one so that when you go to hook it onto your infinity link that it's going the right direction. If it gets turned around, it kind of throws off the way all of this lays and you want to be sure that it's gonna lay nice and neat. Look how pretty that is. We've only done just a small section of this and it's already just so beautiful. Okay, but we're not stopping. We got more to do. All right, so again, twist to open. We're gonna thread that on to, whoops. Sometimes you gotta make sure you get a really good opening on that simple loop, particularly when you're working with a thicker gauged wire. You want to be sure that you've got it open enough. All 
right. So one more here. And then we're going to close that back with a twist. All right, now we're going to open up the other loop on the other side. Attach that to another infinity link and then twist to close that back. And then again with the next bead and making sure everything's going in the correct direction. Close. Okay. All right. Now we're going to do two beads on this side and two beads on this side. And then we're going to, we're going to do the six links here and put together our quick little clasp. If we've got, if we've got time, I hope we do Let's try to speed up a little bit here. over here to the other side and the cool thing about this is that we're only using a handful of these amethyst beads so we're gonna have a ton of beads left over where we can make a matching necklace if we want to we can make a matching set of earrings if we want to we could do a second bracelet uh, any any number of things with the leftover beads I really love it when I can show off a gorgeous bead like this uh, and still have more to work with. Because I know that when I make a beautiful piece of jewelry and I get really excited about the beads, sometimes it's really disappointing when you're like, oh, those are the only ones of the, those beads I had, you know? So it's really cool that you, you've you still got plenty of these to work with. Let's see, we had two, four, six, eight, ten. So we only used ten of the amethyst beads. We've still got a ton, right? We have a lot left. All right, attaching the infinity links here on either end. And then the other infinity links, we're actually going to use some of those jump rings from our findings. That findings kit, I can't believe it had 708 pieces. That's a lot of findings. A lot of findings indeed. All right, opening. Last one. And twist and attach. Okay, so now that we've used all of the beads, okay, now to connect the rest of this, we're going to use some of those six millimeter jump rings. If you'll remember from that findings kit, there are six millimeter and eight millimeter jump rings. And I'm just simply putting these in place of where we had beads in the rest of this design. So jump ring between them. And I actually like to double up the jump ring. I'm going to connect these first and then I'll show you. Particularly when I'm making something that has a large, either the large gauge wire, so the thicker the wire, or just a large component in general. Sometimes an individual jump ring just feels a little lightweight in comparison to the rest. And so what I will do is where there is a single jump ring, <clears throat> I'll go back in and add a second one right next to it. I find that when it comes to balance overall, that really kind of helps I know it's, whoops, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I know it's just a simple little thing, but sometimes that's all it needs to really kind of help balance the overall visual weight of something. I'm not necessarily talking about the actual physical weight. I'm just talking about the way that it looks. You can see the difference there between the double jump rings versus the single jump ring. It's just a tiny little bit more and that little change kind of creates a whole different look so everywhere I've used one I'm gonna add a second we're gonna do the same thing over on the other side we're gonna create a 
quick little clasp for this, though you could use the jump rings and the clasps that are included, right? All right, so switch over here to the other side so that we can add our other links. So there's that one. And while we are going to do the two, I'll go ahead and do the second one right next to that one. And again, down here to connect these two. All right, one more. And then we're going to attach one more infinity link to this and we will need to create a really quick, really quick closure. I actually have one that's already made. So if all else fails, we can use it. All right, last link. I really love the way that this looks. The open links in this really kind of create a fun design. It's a it's a large, as far as width is concerned, it's a large bracelet, but because of the open, all of that open air that is in those links and between the beads, it keeps it from feeling heavy and bulky so it makes it much easier to wear than some cuff bracelets that tend to get a little on the thick, heavy side. You know, you get to the end of the day and you can't wait to take it off. <clears throat> this is definitely a piece where overall it's nice and lightweight. How pretty is that? You could do an entire necklace. You could actually turn the infinity links the other direction to create a beautiful chain. So if you wanted to make a matching necklace with this, instead of your infinity links going this direction, you could do just like this and keep going to create a really beautiful chain that might not be as wide, right? Because it wide works with a bracelet. Sometimes with a necklace, it gets a little tricky depending on like the placement of it. So if you wanted to make a really cool chain to go with it, you absolutely could. And you've got plenty of these amethyst beads and findings to create just that. So a lot of ideas here. All right. So for the clasp, we've only got like roughly two minutes and 30 seconds left uh, before it is time to go. I just wanted to show you, I really just kind of took some wire here. This is where I used both my small and bell, small and large bell making, whoa, yes, <laughs> small and large bell making pliers. Just gonna kind of show you. So just kind of a, a, a quick do it yourself if you don't want to use the clasps but you're just creating a little loop, right? And so that's a small loop. I'm gonna use the large bell making pliers to create a larger loop here. And then we come back around this way. We're definitely going to do findings like this on Master Maker 2 with wire coming up. So you need a little bit more practice or information on creating components with wire. It's definitely in the plans. Definitely in the plans. All right, then you can, if you want to, take your loops, turn them so they're facing away from you. All right. I'm just doing this really quickly. This is a little, he's a little off center. And then just kind of squeeze those together like so. And then you can again, use your small bell making pliers to create a little hook. So let me show you the one that I already did here. So this one was the one we were working on, but where I've got the loops here, right, to hook it here, which is exactly what I'm gonna do real quick, just to show you. So I can 
hook that on there. Oh, it would be helpful if I would put it, I get a little, I'm getting a little flustered because of the time here. So hold on, let me take that off there. Put that right there. All right, so the loops are to connect it to your bracelet, right? Then you're basically gonna create the exact same shape, but instead of curving it over to create a hook, right? Instead of that hook, you just have the loop so that they're actually going to, when you look at it, hook just like that, right? Just a really simple clasp. Um, but again, if you're interested in these kinds of things, we're definitely going to be creating some wire components in Master Maker 2. So definitely wanna come and hang out for that. Or if you don't want to, just grab some of the jump rings from your findings kit and add a lobster clasp to this. All right, so there's the hook on that side or on the other side. Hooks just like so. And you guys, super cute little bracelet, right? Love that with your infinity links and those beautiful amethyst beads. We use some of those amazing findings in that findings kit. All right, guys, I'm going to turn you around. We are going to say a quick goodbye. I want to thank you all for joining me this afternoon. As always, my favorite time of the week is when we get to hang out together, and I'm really happy that we get to do it again on Monday. So set your reminders for 4.30 p.m. Eastern time on Monday afternoon for Master Maker 2. I'll be here with you guys. If you don't want to hang out with me on Monday, that's fine. Same time, same place on Friday, 4 p.m. Eastern time for Master Maker, where I show you all of the cool ways to incorporate all the awesome things that I have acquired from JTV and Jewel School to help you become a master maker. In the meantime, guys, have an amazing weekend. Thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you again very, very soon. Bye, guys.